I am such an awesome guy. I make so many videos. Boom. Hello there. Price of Reason here with a series review. Over the past four months, there have been a series of unexpected production delays with NBC's sequel series, Quantum Leap, amidst a somewhat steady decline in ratings. That is why episode 13 is actually only the fifth new episode of the series to air since November. Perhaps in an effort to improve the show's quality, this episode was directed by Deborah Pratt, who was a writer and executive producer on the original Quantum Leap series. While Deborah Pratt is technically an executive producer on this new show too, she mainly serves as an occasional consultant and not as a day-to-day -day showrunner or producer. Also, as much as I respect the work Pratt has done on the original Quantum Leap series, her ex-husband, Donald Belisario, is actually the original show's creator and boss. At 87 years old though, Belisario himself is now pretty much retired, and an executive producer in name only, likely due to a contractual obligation. Still, I was curious to see what, if anything, Deborah Pratt could bring to the table in this episode. This episode's leap is about a mother and her two daughters trying to run an Indian restaurant after recently losing the patriarch of their family. Ben leaps into the older of the two sisters, and he has to keep their restaurant from burning down or their entire family will fall apart. Since in the original timeline the mother ends up dying due to health issues, this leap is personal to Ben as he lost his mother in a similar way. Ben eventually saves the day, but only after a series of rapid and illogical plot conveniences such as signing them up for a Groupon account and getting 200 new customers within an hour, easily locating and speaking with a big-time investor on the phone and then convincing him to come to the restaurant right away, finding an outdoor pop-up venue to replace the restaurant five minutes after it burns down, and replacing the investor with family members five minutes after the original investor doesn't show up, and more. Meanwhile, in present day, random office guy person is freaking out because magic tells him that one day in the future, he will leap into a drag queen. To make matters worse, during his leap, he will also meet with Ben in 2022, causing Ben to unexpectedly enter the Quantum Leap Accelerator and launch the events of this entire series. Random office guy person is worried that one day it will turn out that he's a traitor. Magic, chief security officer lady, and Ben's disappointed fiance then tell random office guy person to calm down, so he puts on his best, uh, blouse and meets up with his ex, uh, girlfriend? Anyhow, random office guy person's ex assures him that deep down inside, he's still a swell guy, even if their relationship didn't work out for some reason. Random office guy person is relieved to hear this, so he goes back to the office and gets right back to work. As usual, I will go over what I liked about this episode, and then what I didn't like. Number one, leap idea. As we've seen a number of times on this show, sometimes it comes up with a decent idea for a leap, only to then execute it poorly. And while there have been leaps of the new Quantum Leap series that have been executed more poorly than this one, it's really nothing to write home about. Still, the idea itself of a ticking clock, saving a family business, and bringing family members together isn't generally a bad one. Number two, less disappointed fiance. It seems like this episode allowed a little more time for Ben to connect with the different Leap characters. While Ben's disappointed fiance is still a central part of it, her present doesn't completely suffocate Ben's character this time around. I mean, I still don't think she should be Ben's hologram on this show, but even having her interfere less with his Leap is already considered a big win. Number three, family moments. There were scenes between different characters that were meant to be emotional, and surprisingly, some of them actually kind of worked for a change. I think the main reason why is because of the acting of Nandina Minocha, an actress that I wasn't familiar with prior. I think she plays the role of a traditional and overbearing mother very convincingly, and in my opinion, she pretty much carries this entire episode acting-wise. It's also possible that due to Deborah Pratt's experience on the original show, she was also able to direct a few of the emotional scenes with her rather adequately too. With all of that being said, ultimately, the overall episode is still plagued by many issues. Well, that was the good. Now let's talk about the bad. Number one, present day. As usual with this frustrating show, once again, present day events are total filler in this episode, and they only get in the way of the leap itself. 
Even worse, showrunner Martin Giro has once again pulled yet another stinky maneuver on us, right out of the J.J. Abrams Hollywood con man playbook. During the last minute of the previous episode, Magic finds out that random office guy person leaps into a drag queen in the future via a random cliffhanger mystery box. And how is this cliffhanger resolved in this episode? It isn't. Again. Random office guy person is the exact same at the end of the episode as he is at the start of it. No new information is learned. This story doesn't develop in any way. In fact, all of this cheap gimmicky storytelling only leads us to my next issue of the episode and the entire series, and it's a big one. Number 2. Series Plot Hole In episode 8, Ben tells his disappointed fiancé that he left in order to save her life, but in this episode, everybody keeps speculating what random office guy person told Ben to make him leap. I mean, isn't the answer pretty clear? If nothing else, isn't it likely that as the drag queen, random office guy person told Ben that his disappointed fiancé's life was in danger? And if that's the case, wouldn't that mean that he was likely trying to help Ben and not harm him? I suspect that this discrepancy probably has to do with showrunner Martin Giro's overall lack of planning for this season. As I've said in most of my videos until now, he resorts to cheap storytelling mystery box gimmicks that he invents on the fly in hopes of tying the story up in some way down the road. While it is likely that by the end of the season, he will come up with some type of explanation for what we're seeing, that doesn't mean he can just fake an entire season of thoughtful and thorough storytelling. You can't take shortcuts here, and this is perhaps what annoys me about this whole stinky show. Also, at this point, I feel like the leaps are filmed completely separately from the present day events, and later, they're put together to seemingly make sense, perhaps with some additional pickups and reshoots. That could even explain why present-day people don't seem to know why Ben leaped even though they're supposed to because he's already told them. It's entirely possible that we're simply seeing all of these events unfold out of order because Jiro is scrambling to put something coherent together in the editing room. And that may be at least one of the reasons why he's been given so many unexpected hiatuses. It's entirely possible that this show is a complete mess and the network knows it. Number 3. The Writing while the writing on the leap side of the episode is not the worst we've seen on this show, it also isn't great. Once again, NBC's PR team made sure to tell the press how diverse they were, and also that Deborah Pratt herself was involved. It also seems like they even boasted that they let an Indian-American woman write the screenplay, and much like with the trans episode, I dislike all of this virtue signaling. You don't get props just for hiring somebody of a certain background. An episode has to be well written for NBC to do a victory lap, and it's not. While I don't necessarily think that it's a bad idea to hire an Indian-American woman for this type of storyline, especially for her input on the culture itself, but why is she the only writer here? Why not team her up with perhaps a more experienced sci-fi writer? This type of management and behavior by both the network and the producer is an insult to fans who are only interested in the final result. Nobody's interested in seeing a bunch of self-congratulatory back-padding, and I really wish it would stop. Overall, while this episode had some good moments in it, it is ultimately weighed down by this show's ongoing issues. It seems like, no matter how many hiatuses showrunner Martin Giro takes, he just can't seem to get it right. In my opinion, the only way to fix this show at this point is to bring in an entirely new showrunner that actually cares about the franchise and is competent enough to tell an actual story. What did you think about Quantum Leap Episode 13? Did you love it? Feel free to let me know in the comments, and if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to my channel and also clicking on that wonderful notification bell. Thanks for watching, my friends. Thank you, and good day! I am such an awesome guy, I make so many videos. Boom.